you can see that this parabola doesn't touch the x-axis. So there's going to be no x-intercepts and therefore no roots, no solutions, and that's corresponding, that corresponds to the fact that the discriminant gave us no solutions. Now, if you look a little farther, when we get, what does it look like when you get two roots? It will look like a parabola like this, because this is where the roots are. These are the x-intercepts. Two x-intercepts, two solutions, two roots. They all mean the same thing, and the discriminant is greater than zero. Okay, In the case where we had all right, a parabola with only one root, that was when it just touched there and it didn't come across those two places. One x-intercept, one solution, one root. Discriminant equal to zero. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now you get a connection between the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, right? The value of the discriminant being greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero, okay? And then, and then the other case is when we have a parabola that doesn't touch the x-axis, we have zero x-intercepts. zero or no solutions, and zero roots. That's when the discriminant is less than zero. Okay, so these are the three cases. And all of that depends on what the discriminant is. B squared minus 4ac gives us a good indication of what kind of graph we're going to have, what the nature of the roots are, how many solutions we have. In other words, how many solutions we're going to have to this function. So this discriminant is key. You need to learn how to make sure that you, you check that discriminant every time. You can see it right away. You can pretty much tell what kind of the nature. Right away you can tell the nature of our solution set. Okay, so there are some questions that ask you on page 593. 49, 50, 51, and 52, the questions ask you to find the x-intercepts of the graph of each quadratic function. These questions are asked in various ways, and it could be confusing, but realize, okay, now it doesn't say equal to zero. It says y equals x minus 4 times x plus 3. It doesn't say f of x. It doesn't say equals zero. It says y equals that. Remember, y and f of x are the same thing. And again, they're just asking you the same things. Nothing different. X-intercepts of the graph of each quadratic function in the graph, in this case, instead of putting x, f of x, is x, y, what you're used to. Now, um, where is the x-intercept? Well, the x-intercept is when this equals zero. Remember, when do you find the x-intercept of something? If this is a line, it goes through here. This is something, one, let's say it's one, two, three. That's three, zero. The x-intercept is zero when the line or the graph crosses the x-axis. So what you really just need to do is solve x minus 4 times x plus 3 equals 0. We're finding the roots, finding the solutions, we're finding the x-intercepts to this graph. Same thing we've been doing all the way along. x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. Because if this equals 0, 0 times this equals 0. Or if that x plus 3 equals 0, then this times that equals 0. We add 4 on both sides we get x equals 4. This one we subtract 3 on both sides, we get x equals negative 3. So we're done. We found two roots, two x-intercepts, and that's it. We're done. On this one, same idea. We make this equal to 0. We've got x minus 5 squared equals 0. We solve for this. In this case, x minus 5 squared equals 0 if x minus 5 equals 0. So we just add 5 both sides, we get x equals 5. It's true, isn't it? Because if you put in 5 for x, you get 5 minus 5, which is 0, and 0 squared equals 0. Would it work for negative 5? What's negative 5 plus negative 5? Negative 10, negative 10 squared is 100, it won't work. This is the only number that it will work for. So we have, in this case, 1 root. 
Okay, one solution. Two roots. Two solutions. In this case, well, what's x squared plus one? If you make that equal to zero, x squared plus one equal to zero, you can't factor this, can you? No matter what you do, okay? You'll get something like this, x squared equals negative one. Uh-oh, you can't have that. Something squared is never gonna be negative. If you put 10 in there, 10 squared is 100, it's not negative. If you put zero in, zero equals zero, not negative one. No matter what you put in for x, anything. If I put negative, square, negative one squared in, equals one. Nothing, it will not equal negative one. So no solution, no roots, okay? No roots, no x-intercepts, okay? No points that I can give you. On this one, this is x onto x plus 10 equals zero, and then either x equals zero or x plus 10 equals zero, and that means we don't have to do anything with the x equals zero, but we have to subtract 10 here to solve for x, x equals negative 10, and the two solutions to this are zero and negative 10, so this is two roots. All right, because we have positive discriminant. If I were to go ahead and put that in the quadratic formula, I would get a positive. B squared minus 4ac would be positive, and I'd get two roots showing. In this one, I would get no roots, because so therefore I'd get a negative number in my b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac will be less than zero. In this one, I have one root. I'd get b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, equal to zero, okay? And I'm not going to go ahead and solve the whole thing, but that's basically what you'll get. b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero in this case. Two roots. In this case, b squared minus 4ac equals zero, so I have one root. b squared minus 4ac, two roots, would be greater than zero. b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, you get no roots. And it allows you to discriminate between what kind of roots there are, okay? It allows you to discriminate what kind of roots there are. You say that. B squared is equal to 12 squared minus 4 onto 1 on 36, and that's 144, minus 4 times 36, oh my god, that's 144 as well. That's kind of strange. That gives us zero. So what kind, how many roots are we going to have? How many solutions? We're going to have, well, let's see. If we take the square root of zero, what does that equal? zero. So when we go plus or minus, we're going to be plus or minus zero. That means we're only going to get one root, one solution.